Hello and welcome back everyone to another episode of Practical Spirituality for Everyday Magic. I'm your host, Dinah Lee Woodall. Today is a special episode because I have uh, a longtime friend and an old neighbor of mine, uh, Amanda Scherzer, with me today. She is a past life, uh, or she is a, a, hit, a, a hypnotist, I can't talk today, that specializes in uh, past life regression. And she has agreed to come on with me today. And I'm so excited and happy to have you here, Amanda. Thanks. Glad to be here. Yeah. And we're going to talk about a bunch of juicy stuff today because. Um, there's a lot going on right now, you know, in my last episode, and also I want to say hello to, uh, all you YouTubers out there. Um, this is my brand new channel. So, um, welcome, welcome to the Dina Lee channel. <laughs> At least that's what it's called right now. I don't know what it's called when you're watching this, <laughs> but we're going to talk about a lot of things that are going on energetically right now um, because Amanda's in a bunch of communities online. I'm in a bunch of communities online, um, all for people who are, um, you know, doing some, uh, offer some sort of alternative healing method or are practitioners, um, just in an alternative therapy in to some degree or uh, have been into spirituality have been studying spirituality or getting certifications and spiritual related modalities for 10 20 years and what we have all noticed is that since last fall, around August of last year, when we had the total solar eclipse in Leo at 29, 28 some odd, you know, uh, minutes, uh, degrees in, in, which rounds up to 29 degrees in Leo, 29 reduces to an 11. And we are now in an 11 universal year because 2018, if you add up the two plus the one plus the eight, you get an 11. 11 is a master number. So the, the solar eclipse last year was the prequel to this year because it's going to be an 11 year all year long. Okay. And what we've noticed since that eclipse, I mean, I was really excited about it. I don't know about you. I mean, yes, but I was I'm like, so jazzed. I yeah, thought it was like, like such a great thing. So awesome. And, and it felt great. The energy it felt did. totally awesome. But what the hell's happened since then? It's like everything's <laughs> falling apart. Yes. Yeah. It's been one damn yeah. thing after another. And I've been hurt. I've hurt myself. I know many people that have broken bones, had freak accidents, um, just weird stuff. What happened? What happened with you? Because you said I got rear-ended turning into my very own driveway. I was minding my own business, turning into my driveway, and somebody just craned into the back of me. Yeah, I didn't know what. Literally, didn't know it hit me. No idea. What can you do? I don't know. I know. Yeah. But that was totally unexpected. And yeah. when that happens, you know, as a spiritual person, you're like, what is the message? What's yeah. the message? Yeah. What's the karma? What's the, you know, what was the attraction? What did I, yeah. Well, well, at first it's what did I do? What, what am yeah. I not doing that, yeah. you know, you're trying to push me forward faster. Yeah, exactly. So. What's the message? Um, and so, so if we go to the number 11, 11, 11 is a master number and based on, and I'm jump kind of jumping ahead, but we can go back to this and, and talk about, you know, the details of it. But what I think it is, is for everyone, all of you that have been students of spirituality for the last 10 to 20 years, like myself like you, I don't know, when did you, 
kind of make the switch or did you ever, have you always been, I think you may have. I've always had a little bit of it just because my parents, I think came in to pave the way a little bit, you know, a little like that too. But I would say huge after my mom died in 1997, Okay. huge shift. And then another huge shift right around 2012 to where I just had to shift my life completely like from, you know, more traditional businessy making money things to, you know, I, that doesn't make sense to me anymore. Yeah. So. Mine was at a, in uh, 1998 and, but you're a little, you're, you are a little bit older than me. So it was about probably the same age for each of us. Yeah. yeah Cause you said you were something about being 27. I was 27 when my mom died. So that was okay. that's weird. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, and that's a, that's a really, um, important age for people. Um, I believe that's about the time of our second or our Saturn return, um, Hmm. is either the second one or the first Saturn return. I don't know. But anyway, if you look at, at the history of a bunch of musicians, like really awesome, talented people they all died at about that age. It is so funny that you said that because mm-hmm. I had a client that came to me and said exactly the same thing that he felt like, you know, he's 27. There's, he was a musician there. He said, there's so many musicians that die at 27. Yep. And of course I had to say, you're not going to die. So just, yeah, <laughs> it's okay. <laughs> exactly. Not physically. You may like spiritually, the old may die. And then you, you know, you sort of have your rebirth and, something completely different well it is symbolic it is it's symbolic it is symbolic some choose to go ahead and exit you know like you know leave the the world but most people have some sort of change major change or realization that happens at, at about that age and that's when i found spirituality and let go of Catholicism because it was not working for me. It did not make sense. My life, no matter how good I was, which now we know better, you know, no, no matter how good I was, my life was not getting better and Mm -hmm. there was something missing. So, so that was the Phoenix sort of rising from, you know, the ashes there. That is a time of rebirth. Totally. And you mm-hmm. went through a similar experience, it sounds like. Mm-hmm. Yeah, definitely. But um, this is, uh, so for, anyway, for those of you that have been students for a long time, and it seems like everything is kind of going to hell in a handbasket, what I believe is that, number one, your vi- your vibration has been rising you know, all along, as you learn, as you discover, as you become certified, as you do um, your life a little bit differently, start making new choices for yourself, your vibration gets higher and higher. And there is a very real threshold, a place that when you hit it, um, you stop getting that, that high that spiritual high from being a student and learning and discovery because it's so easy to learn and research and it feels so good but there comes a time where you have to walk it you know you have to become it you have to embody your spirituality because what happens is um, you can't step into the next level and now you're manifesting really quickly and you add the energy of this year to that and the prequel to this year's energy, which started at the eclipse. And when you are not in alignment, you're going to know, you're going to know pretty fast, like what, and, and it's confused. You know, you may not know what it is. Sometimes it is just, you know, it might be an emotional thing. Like, um, it might be an emotional, uh, energy, emotional, Um, energy is, uh, way stronger than mental energy. So if you're having bad thoughts, it's it's not necessarily that it's more emotional and physical. So what you're feeling and what you're doing with your physical body. 
who you're with in your physical body, you know, what you're interacting with, with your physical body. Are you angry? Are you joyful? Are you, you know, peaceful? Are you uh, down and depressed? And that is the other topic that we want to bring up, which is there are many, many, many of you that are also hitting this level, hitting this threshold, hitting this resistance point. And a lot of people are experiencing a very real uh, kind of a spiritual blues or spiritual depression. And um, Amanda, I want to let you, what, what are you hearing about that out there in the world? Well, I think, um, you know, part of that is because there, there is a part of the spiritual community that wants um, sort of this work to be done for us <laughs> from the outside, like something's going to happen and then all of a sudden it's going to be okay. We'll all, we'll all have this life that we want. Yeah. And I think mm. when you realize you know, we're, we're the thing that's going to make that happen. That's why we're here. <laughs> like we're here to do that. So, mm. you know, trying to live a spiritual life, but still waiting for that event or that outside. I'm not saying we can't get help and there's tons of help available, you know, if we just ask or, or want it even. But I mean, part of that is just like, Oh, some some big event was supposed to happen and and we thought that like a lot of people thought the eclipse was going to be the event like like a, a big supernatural event that was going to change consciousness and i think it did just not in the way that we might have wanted exactly <laughs> like, right uh you know our consciousness is changing and expanding but we're having to adjust our human bodies and our human thought patterns that we've had all of our lives to match that. Yeah. And I think that's where the disconnect is and where the discord is. And that's when you feel really low and you're like, what's going on? I feel terrible mm -hmm. <laughs> because you've got to, you've got to adjust and, you know, be a little kinder to yourself and, and be a lot more introspective and try to work it out. Try to, um, you know, go with your, go to those spiritual communities and um you know try not to be in judgment of other people because when you go in those communities there's going to be a lot of people who have different truths than you and they're going to say things that you're not going to agree with at all but uh but there are also a lot of people that are just like you and you'll you'll find those people and i think a lot of people are finding their tribe mm. lately so do you guys have like a spirituality meetup in your area we're not um, across the United States from one another. We don't live one another. Yeah. <laughs> um, I don't know. I haven't really looked for that. I know that um, someone I know just started something called Wisdom Workshops, where she's trying to um, excuse me bridge the gap between traditional and spiritual. So she's doing sort of like this in between thing. It's going to be every month, and I'm going to speak at that next month, but. Um, I know, I think, I feel like it's just small individual groups okay. right now. Like I have, I have my coffee nights with my weirdo support group is what we call yeah. it. <laughs> with just a handful of people. But yeah. I feel like, you know, if enough of us get our little, you know, weirdo groups together and then we'll start finding each other, the little groups will start finding each other and right. it'll expand that way. Right. Okay. I'll call mine the alien weirdo woo woo people or something. Yeah. People who feel like they don't belong here. They're not from here. You know, creep. Uh, Radiohead's my right. favorite song. So one of them. Okay. <clears throat> so basically it's not a punishment, you know, all these accidents and falls and breaking bones and people leaving your life suddenly, like they all of a sudden decide I'm out of here, you know, um, change my mind. They're changing their path. What we're doing is we are becoming, and, and first of all, we're co-creating some of this stuff. If any, if another person is involved, it's a co-creation. It's not just your own. You're not that powerful. Okay. 
However, <laughs> you are powerful too because you're manifesting really fast right now. So the 11 year is the, the gateway year. It is a portal way and we are becoming manifesting magicians only we have not really mastered how we're manifesting what we're manifesting and we have not been getting the clue so the intensity is picking up now and if you're not in alignment you're going to get what i call excuse my french the universal ass kicking <sighs> universal ass -kicking. True. yes and the stakes get higher and higher and higher. This is what I've told my girls. It's like, look, let me tell you what's going on right now. You keep doing this and it's not going to be just this. This is the nice way. Okay. Mm -hmm. The universe is being nice right now. And it's it really, gets stronger. It, yeah. It's really you just you. It's just yeah. you. The universe is responding, you know, to you. So if you're out of alignment, you're going to know. So, uh, you know, if you need to keep a journal to, you know, write out like what it, when something happens, like who, what were you doing? Who are you with? What? How are you feeling? Yes. What were you thinking right before? Yeah. Yeah. And were you being irresponsible? Were you being, um, you know, were you in victim mode at that moment? You know, do, do you tend to, um, you know, kind of feel like a victim sometimes and you feel sorry for yourself? Well, you know, this is kind of the, um, the uh, escapism part of spirituality is when uh, there's some schools of thought out there that it's like something is going to come in and save us, you know, mm -hmm. and it's us, like you said, just a little while ago, it's us. It, it's, yeah. it's, we're, it's us. We're the second coming, you know, it's, it's, we are the ones we've been waiting for. <laughs> we are like the we're ones. sitting now going, when is our help here? Oh, wait, I'm the help. Yeah. I, I, you're the help. I didn't realize. Exactly. And so that threshold that we're hitting now that many, many are hitting is you got to come out of the spiritual closet. You got to take off the armor. You've got to clear the smoke, come out from behind whatever you're hiding behind, come out from your hiding place and come out and step up into leadership somehow or even Basically. just your truth because yeah. i know a lot of people just um you know they believe one way but they won't they won't tell anybody like yeah. you said they're in the closet yeah. you you know if you notice you're having a conversation with someone and it's not going well is it because you're just pretending to agree with them but you don't really <laughs> agree with them at all you know i don't know is it I, when you're I, interacting with somebody and you're you feel like constricted because you're not being honest you know you, you got to live what you are you you have to be it and stop not pretend that you're something else and you're really good at that i admire you so much for that um that you just come out you just you just you just post stuff, you know, this was my dream. This was my, da, da, da. and I am still, I, I convince myself that I don't, well, first of all, I don't post hardly anything on Facebook anyway. I just don't really like social media that much. And, you know, I just don't think that what I have to say is all that important, but to, to my Facebook friend, right. But I'll tell you what it really is, is a lot of it's fear because, you know, a fear of judgment or fear of the big one is, is worrying my dad, like disappointing my dad somehow, because, you know, I, they found out about my podcast recently somehow, and I was mortified. <laughs> 
<laughs> well, my sister-in-law like liked one of my posts or something and it went around on social media and then my stepmom liked it and I was like, Ugh. I know but my mother-in-law liked one of my posts that I thought was like probably way too out there for her. Like I figured there's, she doesn't agree so much. She's not gonna, she's gonna think this is weird. You know, she loves me. Yeah. But I'm pretty sure she thinks this is weird. And and she liked to post. And even my husband, who, and it may seem weird to people, but he's not spiritual at all. I mean, he is, but not in the way that I am. Yeah. Um, and I saw that he liked one of my posts and I was just like, what? <laughs> did he, wait, is he just being nice? Or did he actually look at it and read the thing? I don't yeah. know. Yeah. But the trick is you just do it and like close your eyes and, and like, please don't be mean, please, <laughs> like, you just put it out there, regardless, like, I, I have that fear, too, like, somebody's gonna be mean and say, you're crazy, what are you talking about, crazy woman? Oh, but, yeah, one, one of my friends that has a pretty big business, she's a, well, I'm not gonna say what she has, um, because, anyway, there have been people that have been very cruel to her on social media and actually called her, like said she was an idiot, you know, and, and these are people that she knows, not even strangers, you know, and I was like, that just, oh my God, it's some people terrible. just I know. suck. Wait, I watched it. Yeah. That's the big thing about spiritual people is that they can be so judgmental, you know, and cr people Funny. that call themselves spiritual. Yeah. Cause you're not the right kind of spiritual. You're yeah. not the right. Kind. Oh my gosh. I used to subscribe to this, um, channel where the guy posted alien sightings. Cause that's just fun for me. I like, I enjoy watching those and then like heckling in my own mind, whether, you know, if I think it's not good, and eh, okay, that one sucks or whatever. But, yeah. but then one day he posted a compilation of not well-known channelers. Well, one, there was one well-known channeler, but he posted like the most insane thing this channeler has ever <laughs> done in like getting into the channeling state, like his breathing practice or whatever. And then all these other people I've never even heard of that, that are channelers and they looked crazy. And so he posted this compilation making fun of channeling. And I was like, what? we're not the right you post alien videos and you know that people make fun of people that post alien videos so now you're you're gonna make fun of people i just like i'm out i unsubscribed just because i was like what yeah that's that's not necessary What's wrong kind of crazy for you what i don't understand i know just a different brand just different brand doesn't like that yeah. brand but i think the other part of it honestly is and this was gonna kind of um go into more what you do is past life stuff because we let's face it our souls have always been the way they are our physical conditions the human condition has changed a lot but we have always been the way we are we've always been woo woo to some degree we've probably been healers and spiritual counselors and you name it in many, many, many lives. And let's face it, there were times when uh, life was not kind to out there people. They were burned at the freaking stakes, for God's sakes. You know? I was one of them. I have a past life memory of being burned at the stake. And I was just Christian. So yeah. I was in some time and place where I, I was Christian and I believed that. And other people thought it was heresy and mm. they caught me and I was burned at the stake mm. in that life. So even like, <laughs> so every, you know, we live in a, a, a country where it's majority Christian now yeah. and I'm not Christian. <laughs> so it's kind of like a weird flip flop, it but is. I mean, most people would think Christianity, you know, why would you be burned at the stake for that? you know, spirituality, why would you be, you know, insulted and berated for being spiritual? Huh? Yeah. It's just a thing. It's different yeah. cultures, different times, yeah. but you're right. A lot of people hold that, that pain from those other lives and they don't even know. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And the fear, the fear of coming out. Oh, so, 
many lives. And I remember when I, at the point in which I sort of got a deeper understanding of how my understanding of how things work was when I thought, you know, we've had so many lives, hundreds, maybe thousands over and oh, we do this over and over and over. Haven't we done everything? Haven't we already done every single thing we can possibly do? Why are we still here? I don't get it. What's yeah. the point? But I, I think at this point, it's, we're down to emotional nuances. We're down to ascension and physical form. I mean, this, this is the thing that we're working on now. It's like bringing the home that we go to after we die here now, maybe. That's my idea. That's my thought. Uh, someone I know calls it the merging of realms, but it's basically yeah. ascension, descension. And, you know, I got into the whole ascension thing around 2012, you know, 2011, 2012 was in a bunch of online groups. One of them was very popular. Um, people from all over the world were in and um, we all sort of believed, you know, that some major thing, undeniable thing was going to happen um, at that time. But I mean, things, things certainly did change. It has been changing ever since. And they've gotten, in my opinion, in my experience, so intense, so mm. incredibly intense. Like, you know, that nice energy of the nineties, everything was still kind of simple in the nineties and easy. And then in the two thousands, it, it was a little slightly more intense, but then after 2012, it seems like things have gotten pretty darn intense. And, um, and then there's that whole feeling of time speeding up. Oh, well, I was talking 2018. About Wasn't it just 2012? Yeah, it was. It yes. Was. But I was talking with a friend of mine who has a diff another radio show and she was saying that the whole Fukushima thing, the earthquake and the Fukushima, that it threw off something. It threw off our, the earth, either the tilt or the angle or the speed, the rotation. And don't quote me on exactly what it was because I haven't looked it up and I don't know, you know, don't everybody make a bajillion comments, you know, that I'm wrong because, but it somehow affected the earth itself. It changed something. And I believed it changed the orbit in some way or the speed at which we rotate. And so it, it had an effect and that was one explanation or partial explanation is why time seems like it's sped up. I mean, if, if our, what if our day is not a 24, what if 24 hours isn't what 24 hours used to be? What if it's different now? I mean, I have also felt like the seasons are not right. Yeah. Like it's, it's too warm. It's like summer in the fall. And then in the winter, it's still not cold enough. And then yeah. when we get to spring, it's cold. Yeah. So, yeah. you know, I felt like that for the past several years too. It's kind of weird. Yeah. I'm wondering if we aren't either undergoing the beginnings of some kind of a pole shift or the magnet. I know the magnetics of the earth are changing and they change all the time, but the last time I heard anything, they were really low. I mean, like super, 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 super low magnetics. And when oh, they- Oh yeah, we haven't had as, as many, it, we're in grand solar minimum, like super, like, so when we get a solar flare, it's like a super dinky solar flare and it doesn't do anything. But since our magnetic field is so low, when we get a big solar flare that normally wouldn't bother us, since we haven't had any, events for a long time yeah then it it dings us you know yeah. so yeah um suspicious observers that that youtube channel suspicious observers and he's got a four-part series on uh how we are moving through the cosmos and how we were we are moving don't quote me like you said 
But what I, what my takeaway was that we were, we are moving into an area we, where we're going to be more affected by the energies, the, the clouds of energies that we aren't, haven't been in before. Okay. So that's okay. another, you know, reason why this ascension may be either happening or why it's speeding up or why we're, we're feeling it. I mean, I'm always checking, um, he's got a website spaceweathernews.com and I, whenever I feel just weird or off and I cannot attribute it to anything going on in my life, then mm -hmm. I go to that website and I say, what is, you know, or is it camera rays? Is the electron flux really high? Like what is happening that's affecting me mm -hmm. like that? And I know a lot of other spiritual people are saying, you know, I'm having this anxiety and I, I don't know where it's coming from. I just feel awful. Mm -hmm. And a lot of it is from the collective, you know, yeah. um, I know there are a lot of people who are spiritual practitioners, uh, psychics, um, just all, all you know, the whole gamut, run the gamut. And some are very sensitive to planetary activity and solar activity. And some think it's the stupidest thing they've ever heard of. Not everybody is sensitive, but some of us right. are. That does not make us victims <laughs> though. You know, we, it's just like, you know, de try to depersonal, make it not as personal, you know, it's just like, Oh, something's going on. It's not me. This yeah. Is if you just acknowledge yeah. it, then you can go, okay, I get it. I'm going to take a deep breath. <laughs> I'm going to go meditate. I'm going to go for a walk. Yeah, exactly. It's we're having solar flares or geomagnetic storms or whatever. Cause I got that same app you did on the, on the weather, the, the mm -hmm. weather thing. But anyway, getting back to you <laughs> and past lives. So how, how long have you been interested in this? Like what, what got you into, uh, uh, when did you become a hypnotist and all that? Um, I have always been interested in anything paranormal. Um, I remember my, my grandmother had a whole box of some, it was, it was probably like a time life book series or something. And it was all like supernatural stuff. Like there's a book about fairies and then there's a book about ghosts and there's a book about, you know, something else. And that always fascinated me because that's not something people talk about yeah. a lot. And, and, but, but there, you know, in these books, there's all these stories of people who have experiences of, of all these things. So, so that always fascinated me as a kid. And then I think when I was in college, um, well, when I, well, when I went to college, I saw a stage hypnotist mm -hmm. and, I, and I thought, well, that's really interesting, but I didn't really think too much about it. And then later on, um, I had to pick something up from a friend late at night and she had been reading a book about past life regressions and it had a regression script or it told how to do it or whatever. So she said, Oh, please let me do a past life regression on you. And at that time it was still kind of woo woo to me. And I was like, I don't really know what's going to happen. So if I do that, I want, I want somebody I know sitting beside me, somebody I know well and I trust so that, yeah. you know, if anything weird happens, they can intervene. And so I said, no, I said, no, I'm not, Gonna, oh, let me just do a relaxation thing on you. And at that point, I was so tired. I was like, if you relax me anymore, I will fall asleep. Please, please. please. All right, fine. So I, I, okay, do your regression thing or whatever. So she did the, you know, relaxation, which we call an induction and in hypnosis. And then she did the past life regression anyway. Never do mm. that. Mm. Never, ever do that to somebody. But I mean, at the same time, like I was able to say, you know, I don't want to do this. But I didn't. I just went with it because I, eh, okay, I feel okay with it, whatever. So I went and she did. And I saw stuff. And, um, you know, and then, I, and then I was done. And then I glared at her because I told her not to do that. And she did it anyway. <laughs> but, so that yeah. was my first experience. Like, I actually saw something. And she, she had actually, during the hypnosis, had asked me, you know, I was in a room. And she said, is there a mirror in the room? And I said, yes. And she said, walk over to it. And I was like, uh, uh because the idea if you're not ready of looking in the mirror at yourself and not seeing yourself 
Yeah. That was too much. I couldn't do that. I didn't yeah. want that. So you have to be, it's a thing you have to be ready for. So that was like 25 years ago or something. And then a little later on, I read a book that had a script from an actual hypnotherapist. So I thought this is okay. You know, he's published a book. He's well known. It might've been Brian Weiss. I'm not sure. And uh, my younger brother and I were on vacation in Canada visiting my dad and stepmother. And, uh, and so I was like, let's, let's do this. So, you know, my little brother lays down and I go through the script. And then we get to the part where he starts describing himself. You know, I look down at your feet. What do you see? And he starts describing his shoes. Um, and then I'm like, well, what are you wearing? And he starts describing it. And it's obviously not from this time period. It's obviously older. Right. And he freaked himself out. He was not ready. And he sat up and he's like, I don't, I don't want to do this. <laughs> So he freaked out, but that was my first thing. And so then I had my stepmother do one for me and I saw a really vivid life in France during the, I think it was pre-revolutionary, pre-revolution in France. Um, so that was cool. So that's when I started being interested in it and reading more about it, reading books and um, practicing, but it's not until, it wasn't until, um, I don't know, four, four years ago, I guess my, my youngest was about two and I had quit. I had given up my, I had a business. I had a, a web programming business that, that was just mine that I ran. I made really good money. Yeah. Um, but when you have three little kids at home, which I did at the time, you just can't, you can't program and have screaming kids in the background. It doesn't work. So yeah. I'd given up my business that by this time she's two or three it's it's easier one of them is in school one of them is in daycare and i said i i, I want to go back to work but i don't want to do the program again that was awful stressful it makes money you know i should have done it maybe but and then so i started looking like what can i do that has a flexible schedule it's interesting to me and um and can help people. That's another big thing. Like all, all the things that I've done have been interesting and fun, but I wanted like a help humanity kind of right. thing. I like, I just felt called all of a sudden. Uh, and then I got an email from a hypnotherapist in London who I had purchased a recorded past life regression from 10 years prior to that. Um, and he was offering an online hypnotherapy course and it's not a past life. It wasn't a past life regression course. It was hypnotherapy. And so I thought, this is it. This is, this is the thing I'm going to do. I'm going to do hypnotherapy. And so I, I did the course, I got my certification and I had intended to do, you know, no, not stop smoking and, you know, fears and phobias and blah, blah, blah. And then I realized, you know, that's not being authentic because that's not what I really want to do. I hate that. I don't know how to make people stop smoking. I've never smoked. I mean, I do know how to make them stop smoking, but it just like, I've never smoked. So that just didn't feel right. And I knew I'd always been interested in past life regressions. And I just said that that's the thing. And the funny thing is when you, when you try to move in the direction of what you think you should do, it doesn't work. And then when you move back to what you want to do, it, it flows a lot easier and you start getting clients. And mm -hmm. so that was, I mean, I got my certification three or four years ago and started practicing and it's what I love. And I, and I'm just learning more things from each client that I have. And from my own, I've, I've had over 20, more than 20 past life regressions that I've done on myself or had a, a practice partner do or um, had a friend read a script to me um, or done from a recording. And uh, it's just fascinating. Mm. There's just so, so much benefit to it, I think, in so many different ways. Well, tell that's, let's talk about that. What are some of the benefits? I mean, I know, I know to me, what came to my mind was fears and phobias, but obviously there's so much more than that. So tell, give us, 
some, you know, examples and how they help and maybe tell us some stories, you know, from yeah. your work. Yeah, fears and phobias, definitely. That's a good example because, you know, if you have a fear that you can't trace to this life, and that's, that's the first thing I would do is try to trace it back in this life. Because sometimes you have it, you know, if something happens to you before you're three and you just don't remember. You don't have any conscious memory of it, but it's, it still happened in this life. Mm -hmm. So we check that first. Um, and if you, if you can't find anything, then you go look in previous lives. And I had a client who, um, she had a number of issues she wanted to address. And one of them was that she loved horses and she had ridden horses when she was younger, but at, at some point she just suddenly became paralyzed. She couldn't even get on a horse and she loved them and it made her so sad. Um, and she also had a fear of heights, a fear of going fast, um, fear of water, I think, fear of drowning or something like that. Anyway, so we went and we did her session and um, it was funny because the life she saw, you know, when, where it started, you know, like, where are you? And she's on a horse um, at someone's house, but it's near a cliff where there's water. And I'm like, ha, huh, I got it. She's, she's going to be on her horse. She's going to go over the cliff into the water. Solved, right? No, but nothing to do with that at all. <laughs> so Really? Life into another life where she was on um, some kind of ship and there were horses on the ship too. And there was a storm and the ship capsized somehow. And she remembered seeing the horses struggling in the water and it just made her so sad and it freaked her out. And so that was the trigger that she couldn't remember. Obviously something happened in this life with the horse and the water event. And she didn't know why, that triggered the fear because she didn't have a conscious memory of it. it was from another life. But after we did that session, I think it was only a month later, she and her husband bought a horse and she posted a picture on Facebook with her on the horse, which she had oh. not been able to do previously. Wow. So I was really pleased with that result. Yeah. So yeah, it can definitely help. I mean, just knowing what the trigger is and what happened you know, helps with that. But I mean, it, it's, it's fears. It's, um, oh, what's some other things? You, um, relationships. Yeah. You know, well, how does, yeah. How does it help with relationship? I had a, someone who just felt like she had a block that she couldn't, she couldn't have a relationship and she didn't know, like she felt the block, but she didn't know what it was. So we did her regression and she saw life, I remember it was 1700s or 1800s where uh, she was engaged to someone. She was wealthy and she remembered standing at a window and somebody pushed her out the window and she fell and died. What? And it was her fiance in that life. Wow. So can you imagine if you have this subconscious knowledge that, you know, if you're in a relationship with someone, they're going to kill you, <laughs> you know, like, of yeah, course she's not going to want to be in a relationship, a serious wow. relationship, right? Yeah. So, yeah, it's really fascinating because, and to me, like the thing with the horse and the cliff and the water, you know, like sometimes I'm like, oh, I bet it's this, you know, and it's never, it's, it's never, never that you think it is. Yeah. No. What about um, health? Can it, uh, how could, um, so, so let's, let's go to like, where is all this information? Is it in the subconscious and it's here with us now? Is it, is it in our soul? I've heard someone, um, a friend of a friend who says that the subconscious mind is the soul. You know, that's not what I, I mean, I'm trained in all sorts of things and I have never heard that but I think the subconscious may be contained within the soul. I don't believe that it is the soul though. It may be a piece of it or right? a component of it. Right. But, I think that we're just trying to you know, like over time, we've been trying to put labels on things that we don't have a, a good conceptualization on. Um, I think a lot of what a lot of people call the Akashic records. Yeah. Um, the sort the I just call it the source of all knowledge. Yeah. Um, and I'm not sure you can put a physicality on that. It just. 
Well, that would make sense because where I go to get information on a soul profile, like give the soul's gifts, the manifesting blueprint is the Akashic record. That is well where I get some of the information and that is fifth dimensional information. So if we're in the third dimension and then our mind, our thoughts and time is fourth dimensional and third, you know, mind fourth dimensional time starts in the fourth dimension, fifth dimension, no time. Mm -hmm. It's like we said, the source of all information. And if the subconscious or, or are you saying the place you're accessing to get this information is fifth dimensional in nature, or if, or is it in the Akashic record? Or do you believe um, the person is, is accessing their own Akashic record, maybe? That's a whole another topic line where I could go down. But um, I can't say that it's fifth dimensional, but I can say that what we're doing is, I, I, we have access to all this knowledge all the time, but we're too busy yeah. thinking about what we're going to make for dinner, how to pay our electric bill, you know, yeah getting our car fixed, you know, like we don't have, our brain is too busy to, yeah. to tap in. I mean, we're learning how to do that. You and I are learning how to do that in our daily lives, you know, integrating that. But, you know, the process of hypnosis is um, changing your focus. So if you change your focus and you have an intention of, of accessing information, wherever that, you know, if it's a place where this information exists, you know, I don't know. I don't know if we can, I don't know if we in this human experience can understand the concept of the source of all knowledge, because even saying source means there's a place where it's contained. Yeah. yeah. Like a locality, a specific right. locality in right. space or whatever. I think it, did you see the movie interstellar? Yes. Okay. So that when he went into the black hole, you know, and the terror, what, what was the, it wasn't a tesseract, was it a tesseract or a, I can't remember it was so yeah. long ago. I can't remember what the ge geometrical, you know, name of the, the thing is, but he's basically in the Akashic record, you know, because mm -hmm. he's in there and he's looking at all these individual moments of his life, but they're not in order. Mm -hmm. There is no linear because there's no time in the fifth dimension. Right. It's, it's like little facets, little pieces, but the Akashic record would contain all of the pieces of all of our lives, all of them, not just the one that we're in and not just the most pre the previous one, but all right. of it. So all and that not information, just, and not just the past ones from our perspective. True. I went to a future life. That's awesome. Just like what? What just happened there? Yeah. You know, I didn't expect that. So yeah, our concept of time is just for our use while we're here. Yeah. Um. So yeah, there there is some source, whether it's physical or not, somewhere or everywhere, where when you focus and you set your intention, you have access to that. And it processes through your human mind and experiences. And this is why I think future lives are hard for people because, you know, if you took Columbus when he was alive and showed him a life that he lived today, he has no basis for the internet. He has no basis for cell phones. He wouldn't know what it was. He'd be saying, I've got this, there's some little shiny, square thing that's shiny on one side and it there's some kind of you know star a star is blinking on it you know yeah I, exactly like you wouldn't know what useful. that means. yeah not yeah. useful so but, so but we are we have these fears and phobias and health problems and relationship issues and all that because some part of us is is able to access this information it's mm -hmm. contained within us somewhere. So even though we talk about different dimensions, it's, it's all here, you know, it's all right. right here. It's not part, some of it's way up there and some of it's down here. It's all right here. It's just different dis densities of inf information. So, so when people have these things, do you feel like it's some kind of a bleed through, like the information is bleeding through I don't think that's necessarily, I mean, you know, it, 
it may be required to get your attention or to put you on a path that you wouldn't go on. But I think mainly there's a trigger in your current life and you're not getting it. You're not seeing why that's happening. Yeah. So when you have a past life regression, it's just like a tool. Yeah. Where we take you and we show you that past life where you had a similar situation and it, you know, and in the, during the process, I mean, you not only go through the past life, but you leave that body. And then you look back on the entirety of that life and the entirety of the situation. And you have a complete understanding because you're outside of it. Um, and so when you take that knowledge and you bring it back into your current life and apply it to the problem, you get it. Yeah. You suddenly get it. Yeah. So I think a lot of times there's just a trigger in our current life. And when you access this past life, it really can be used as a tool to just understand, to completely understand what, what the issue is. Yeah. We do tend to make a lot of the same choices over and over again, don't we? <laughs> yeah. Well, and I just think in the same life across many lives so until we get it, we get to play here as long as we want to. <laughs> That's right. We've got infinity we can come back as many times as we want until we, you know, feel good about, like, okay, I think I've got that. I think I got it down now. I don't have to do that one again. So. Yeah. Well, so what, tell, tell me, um, how can the, how has, can in this help health having a past life regression? Like somebody who's con constantly sabotaging themselves or like how, what's your experience with that? I think in a couple of different ways, and this is from my own personal experience. So I feel like I can really, you know, justify what I'm saying. Um, you know, there's the, the thought that, um, our emotional states can show, can manifest as physical symptoms. Oh, definitely. So, yeah. For example, if you're, if you have a lot of thoughts that you, you're really excited about and you feel like you need to speak, that's your truth and you're stifling it. Mm -hmm. A lot of people right now have thyroid issues and that's, that's where that manifests. If you have something to say and you're not allowing yourself to, to be yourself, to speak that, speak your truth. Um, yeah. So that's, that's one aspect of it. It can manifest that way and you can use a regression to, to point out that, Hey, you know, you're, you're stifling and that's what's causing your illness. And then the other thing is, um, situational like i i had been feeling very stressed i had high blood pressure because i'd been so stressed out um and i did a past life regression and i went to a life where i was um well my therapist said i was a knight but i what what i saw myself as was like a a medieval ups guy I was, a, I was a male in that life. You, you are male or female. It doesn't matter mm -hmm. from the spirit perspective. You just pick, you know, something yeah. that situationally will help you learn. Um, I've remembered mostly female, but I have remembered quite a few male incarnations. But anyway, so I was a male in this life and I was in charge of taking this rich barren person who lived in a castle, taking his things. If he needed to, to give someone something, deliver something. Um, if he needed to get messages or whatever, it was, I led a few, like a small group of men and we would take the stuff and it was a cush life for that time. Um, I always had a room in a castle, right? I was well fed. I had a bed and, um, I didn't have to work in the fields. Like, hauling in the crops and stuff. I didn't have to dig stuff and host, you know, like I, it was not a hard life, but I was constantly in fear. I was constantly worried about, um, is somebody going to attack us? Is somebody going to try to take our stuff or is, you know, I can't, I got to make, I'm in charge of these men. I have to make sure they make it back to their families and stuff like that. So even though I had a really easy life and I was supposed to be enjoying it, <laughs> I was stressed out all the time yeah. and the way that they showed this to me, like right from the beginning and I don't know who they is, but you know, yeah, right from the beginning, the first thing I saw was there's this brand new cart, like the big wheeled things that you carry stuff on. 
and it's blocking the road and there's no one around. And I'm thinking, why did, why would somebody leave a brand new car? You know, that's a valuable back then, a brand new cart. Sure. There's nothing on it. And somebody left it in the middle of the road. And so I'm thinking this is an ambush and I'm checking the tree lines and I'm freaking out. You know, I just know we're going to get ambushed and nothing happened. Nothing ever. And so I had my men push this cart over into the creek or river or whatever, which conscious me goes, that's kind of harsh. You know, like, why didn't you just roll it out of the way? But it was heavy. Um, and so we go all the way to the castle and nothing ever happens. But that cart is still in my head. I'm still like, what's the deal with the cart? That, you know, that, that cart was in the way and that doesn't make sense. And there's something's going to happen. So I'm, even after the event's over, I'm still worried about some dumb thing. So now when I get, when I feel stress over something and I just tell myself, would you just quit thinking about the stupid cart? Like, yeah. you know, right. it puts it in perspective. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, I just, it, it's just a really good tool for, for seeing how you're, like you say, out of alignment, you're out of alignment, you're, you're yeah. doing something that doesn't make sense. Yeah. And when I realized that once I, the other thing about that life was once I left the body, I hadn't realized how tense physically I had been, mm. but once I went out of there, it was like, <sighs> wow, that was intense. You know, like I yeah. didn't realize how stressed out I was until I came out of it. Yeah. And after that, um, regression, my, I didn't have high blood pressure anymore. Really? I went back to the doctor and my yeah. reason was normal. Yeah. I had to wean myself off of my blood pressure medicine because my blood pressure was too low on it. So I weaned myself off and then I went back to the doctor and he took my reading and it was like the best reading I'd ever had. And he said, so are you still taking the blah, blah, blah? And I'm like, no, I quit that six months ago. <laughs> wow. So yeah, I'm not saying, I don't know if that's typical or not, but it worked for me. Wow. So, now yeah. that's pretty amazing. That is yeah. amazing. That was pretty cool. Yeah. <laughs> so real physical results in your physical body from yes. having a past life regression. That's, yeah. that's, uh, yeah, that's, that's awesome. Yeah. What about, and we, we haven't talked about this in a while, but are you still doing the, um, the regressions to the life in between lives where we go in between? Yes. And those oh. are my favorite because that's where you get some real big picture understandings of your purpose um, not just in this life, but you get a sense of what you've been doing all this time, all this time. Um, It'd be nice to know. I want to know that myself. Yeah. I mean, I just did one Sunday for someone. It was about, it was like two and a half hours. And um, so we did a past life regression and then we went between lives um, and she saw, you know, who her spirit guides are. She saw, you know, um, loved ones from the life that we had just seen for her. Um, yeah, it was, it was really interesting. And then I've added the new thing I've added. The new thing I'm really passionate about is seeing your pre-life planning session for this life. Like what, who, who did you make agreements with before you came here? This That'd life. be awesome to know. Um, what is it you're trying to like what what were you trying to accomplish like what was your plan coming in and that to me is fascinating and you wouldn't think that you would be allowed to know that right? I know because you it seems like it. forbidden information like it's going to ruin all right. the fun for you right right but no I think it, it's the time we're in the time where we need to know what we're doing like what am I doing let me tell you like, let's do a pre-life planning session and see like what, what, what you had planned. Yeah. Now they won't tell you certain things like, um, you know, if you're not supposed to know that you're going to meet somebody and you're not supposed to know who that is and what agreements you have, because otherwise you may not complete those because you'd know ahead of time. Yeah. They just won't. Then, then, then you'll just go, yeah, I'm not allowed to know that yet. Yeah. Or I'm not, that's not going to happen yet. Yeah. So. Yeah. They just want to tell you, if you're going to screw something up, you're not going to be able to know it. Yeah. 
Well, that's uh, that's cool to know. And just I want to let everyone know right now uh, while we're at this point that you have. Uh, so your website is timetravelhypnosis.com, right? All yeah. together, timetravelhypnosis.com. I'll have the link in the uh, show notes below the video and below in the uh, iTunes description. And you have are offering uh, to everyone listening to the show or watching us on YouTube a twenty five percent discount on the two hour uh, therapy session that you are offering. Yes, right. and that the two hour one includes a past life regression, life between lives, where you talk to a guide or maybe a, your counsel or wherever you go. It's it's whatever's the best for you is what usually happens. And then your life planning session. That's awesome. Yeah. That sounds like a lot of fun, actually. I need to it do really that. is. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah I just don't, just don't forget to mention Dinah's name when you go to schedule that session in your, in your, uh, there's an intake form and just mention in the notes that um, Dinah sent you. Yeah. So, <laughs> I'll know to give you that discount. Say Dinah Lee or Practical Spirituality or Dinah on YouTube or say something about Dinah. It's D-I-N-A-H and uh, Amanda will honor that discount for you. Um, and don't wait, guys. I mean, and, and I am one of the worst about asking for help or actually reaching out and scheduling help for myself. I'm always like, no, I can do this all by myself. I'm going to be able to get over it, blah, blah, blah. Well, let me tell you something. I have... One of my major life lessons, because I've done a many soul, you know, different soul readings on myself. And one of my biggest lessons that I'm here to learn, and it's not really a lesson. It's not like we're here to learn lessons, but it's a concept that we came to master. And one of mine is receiving. And I suck at <laughs> receiving. So many of us do. Yeah. And I think the, the thing about um, I can do it myself, that's yeah. a spiritual person's lament everywhere, you know, like, yeah, yeah. But, but you know, it's all about connection. You got, you know, we all have to connect to each other. We're all, we're all here working on the same thing. So, yeah. And plus, I always want someone else another healer to help me. I don't necessarily like, I am so clear when it comes to other people. It's what I do all day long, you know, is work with people, work on people and all that. But when it comes to myself, it's like, do I trust this? Do it, you know, do, am I interpreting this the right way for me? Because we're not as, as objective with ourselves. Well, and you can't see the forest when you're in the middle of it. True. You're like you're in your, you're in the middle of your own stuff. You can't yeah. see your own stuff. Right. Somebody outside's got to tell you, Oh, you're in a forest. Oh, okay. Yeah. Now that makes sense. Exactly. That's why we're not the only person that exists on the planet. We need <laughs> other people. So don't wait. If you're going through something, if you're having a health issue, if you feel like you're blocked, like you can't receive love or you can't find that person or whatever, or, um, you know, any number of issues, uh, nightmares, any, any issue, it's like, yeah. it doesn't matter what the issue is. Yeah. Anything, anything at all. Yeah. There's always a root cause. There's always, something like you said that's triggering it either a current life or in a past life or if you just nothing's going on nothing's really bothering you you're not having a challenge right now and you just want clarity on what your purpose is what you what your soul intended for this lifetime then schedule that two hour session with amanda and get the 25% discount so yeah, and you don't, we, uh, we can do it over Skype. You like, yeah. I don't, wherever you are in the world, I've done people in England. I've done people in many other States. So it doesn't matter. Okay. Awesome. 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 Um, what else did you want to cover in as far as hypnotherapy goes or anything they need to know? cannot think of anything. Okay. There's a lot of information on my website. Some of my past lives I've written up and they're on my website too. Okay. So, All right. Yeah. 
lots of info. If you have any questions, contact me through the website. I'd be happy to answer whatever. Yeah, Amanda's super easygoing. I don't know if I said it at the beginning of the show, but we've known each other since we were about five or six years old. We uh, lived just a few houses away from one another in the middle of the South. We did not grow up in uh, any kind of new age spiritual community and nowhere cool at all absolutely Wait, we're in the bible belt y'all exactly <laughs> and we both grew up into these to be these alternative you know health slash spiritual practitioners it's really just blows my mind so um, and I think we both picked up the same book that really didn't we talk about that that it was um Neil conversations with god yep like after my mom died, I picked that book up and I was like, oh, it, it, I picked up the same like book reading, reading. Like I was just after that, I was just another one, another one, another one, another one just kept That's going. So weird. Yeah. Because I had gone through, I had divorced the father of my four children, right? Is not a good situation. And I had just remarried thinking this guy's got it all. He's got a great job. He has, you know, he's got his act together financially. He's, you know, a nice person, blah, blah, blah. And then I found out that it was all a sham. It was all a sham. And I felt like I was such a good person and could not understand why I felt like I was being punished. It's like what you said about being rear ended. It's like, what have I done? What have I done to deserve this? This is terrible. And I've done it again. I've gotten myself into a terrible, I've made a terrible decision. And I was ashamed. I was embarrassed. And I did not know. I, because I put my whole heart into it, right? And of course, I was naive too. But I went to the bookstore and I was like, I don't know what I'm looking for, but I want some answers from God. <laughs> I want some answers. I want some answers because the Catholic <laughs> Church <laughs> obviously left a bunch of stuff out, right? None yeah. of it made sense. None of it. None of it made sense. I had well, and that's, he, that's the vibration of the book. That's exactly what he said. That's how his book started. Like he yeah. wanted some answers. Like yeah. if this is true, then why is this happening? You know, like that's yep. how it starts. Uh, I took my four little kids in there and I was like, I, where I know I'm going to get these answers And that book. Just, I came across that book and I read either the back cover or the inside flap or something. And I remember, I will never forget the hair on the back of my head just stood on in. And I was like, this is it. This, this is the book. And that was it. And I never looked back. You know, we should also say that it's not like we've been best friends since we were five and six because you moved away. It's I only did. been in the last few years that that like we've just found each other on Facebook or something and then realized like we have we're doing the same thing. Exactly. You know? it's not yeah. like we grew up together and like encouraged each other and helped each other and like right. found the spiritual path like all along the way. It's exactly. Like, and we like we my family moved away because dad was mill is is retired military then we moved back in high school and you and i ended up at the same high school but we weren't hanging out together back then i don't even remember that did i even know you were there? yeah <laughs> I remember you, did. That. you you did but you you were into your stuff and i because you were a senior when i came back and i was a junior there that was an alternate timeline because I have no memory of that whatsoever. Seriously? Like, I was on a different timeline than you because I don't, I honest to God, I have absolutely no memory that you were at my high school. Wow. None. Well, so yeah. You know, do you go into that? You brought up something interesting because I took a like um, Yoda level master, master level soul you know, um, reading and engineering and all, it just, it's so deep, but do you explore through hypnosis the multiple timelines within one? Um, I know 
you know, I also belong in a, a couple of practitioners groups specifically for past life regressions and between lives mm -hmm. and all that. And I know some people freak out about, um, there's a therapy that I've tried where, you know, if you have a really traumatic event, you just go back and rewrite it. You just go back and change that. And a lot of people freak out about that. Like, oh no, you can't change that. What about all the lessons you learned and stuff? I'm like, just, it's just a different timeline. It's not like you're erasing the original one. You're just also exploring the other one and you're making a choice. I like that one better. Let's, you know, I've already done that. Let's move over to this one and see how it feels. And a lot of times it feels a lot better. So I'm not really sure. Um, but you know, scientists say there are infinite universes. So why can't we, what's wrong with exploring our other ones? Yeah. Well, what what I heard the so what I heard was yes we are in multiple timelines simultaneously okay mm -hmm. but what we're doing in other ones is not really our business exactly because that was that was the line of thinking anyway because it would distract us it would it doesn't have a a practical use is basically what it was it would simply be a distraction or a form of escapism. Yeah, um, something else to fry your brain and try to imagine living all the timelines. <laughs> like, yeah, oh, exactly. Much. Yeah, that's too much. But um, what what the um, theory is behind that is that it's just much more efficient for our soul to evolve and have experiences instead of you know, our over soul, the big soul, mama soul, papa soul, whatever that is in the fifth dimension and up, you know, the part that is with us here, but is also what I, what I call the over soul. So it doesn't have to wait for one whole life to be lived out from start to end to go, what's she going to do today? Probably the same damn thing she did yesterday, you know? <laughs> She's going to screw up again. I know she is, you know, but that we're actually living in several timelines, not infinite numbers, but a certain number of timelines at once so that we do get to see sort of from a different perspective and go, Oh, look how this timeline's working out. Look how this timeline's working out. Look how this time. But yeah, I think Michael Newton describes that in one of his, uh, Does he? Past life books. Yeah, okay, he talks about I didn't how read that one. I read, the, you know, after you die and you go back to your soul group or whatever, and this is his his whole thing. Um, you you do have a life review, kind of yeah. like, and so what I like about the life planning is you can see. Um, it's kind of like you have junction points where you're like, well, at this point, like this is an important junction point and it can either go this way or it can go this way. Yeah. So when you're doing your life review, you can go, how did I do at that junction point? Well, I went this way and I kind of did the crappy one and that's yeah. not really what I was hoping for, but it's okay. You know, whatever. Or you went this way and you're like, ah, I did it. That's what I meant to do. And I, it worked out or whatever. So yeah. 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 Like, you know, scientists say infinite and I didn't mean to imply that you live. Well, I don't know. Some people say that you could, like every time you make a decision, you're, you know, that's a timeline split and you live both entirely, which I can't, you know, that's hard to wrap your brain around. But in Michael Newton's books, he does talk about, um, you can go back and watch how your life would have progressed if you had made this other choice. Okay. Like you can just watch it happen. So that's interesting. It's interesting. I just, just had so a conversation many. about this this morning with one of my clients and it was about making a choice. We were talking about saying no. Okay. And so many of us that try our damnedest to be good people say yes too often. Okay. We say yes when we really need to say no when we want to say no when we feel a no we need to say no but we don't and guess what that other door that we're waiting to open in our lives we're waiting for that door we're waiting for that thing we're waiting for that person we're waiting whatever you're waiting for that job whatever it is 
it's never going to show up until you shut walk through the door that says no then that door shuts and that other reality is no longer possible for you and mm -hmm. then now you're in a hallway of sorts with a bunch of new doors in it that you never would have seen if you hadn't walked through the no to the mm -hmm. so it's the make the choice and all of a sudden you collapse that possibility. Okay. Yeah. So yeah. that makes sense to me. Yeah. It was a really interesting conversation. I was like, I know this, I know this stuff and I just, just do it, you know, walk through it. So knowing it and practicing are like two different things. I was talking to a friend and I, I was saying, you know, I don't want to, I don't want to call them distractions, but earth life has so many options available yep. that you can lose your focus easily. I mean, yep. it's hard to stay focused today. There's so many, you know, um, things you can do and ways of being and, and ways of feeling like, so you have all these choices and it's not just a, a choice of I'm going to go to work or I'm going to go over here. It's like, I'm going to feel this way about something. I want to try to feel this way. You know, it's like, so it's so expansive. Mm -hmm. And so keeping that focus on like, what do you really want? What are you trying to accomplish? And what do you want to know about? And keeping that focus yeah. and not going, Oh, but chocolate. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> roller coasters. And you know? Starbucks. Starbucks. <laughs> and croissants <laughs> yeah exactly and because it feels you know we we're talking earlier about how it feels like time has sped up it just seems like like i would love to do more podcasts um start doing videos and i would love to do a video every day and i have a whole other channel where i'm doing something totally different it's one of my other real dorky fascinations um with cryptocurrency and um i want to know about that huh you okay um i love it um but uh there's not enough time like i work with my clients you know you gotta have enough energy left over at the end of the day to not only do what you need to do or what you have to do but also what you want to do right mm -hmm. and sometimes i just it's like I don't, there's just, I'm done, you know. You gotta have my sister-in-law on the show because that's the second thing you've mentioned that she's, that's her specialty, is getting getting you to uh, get rid of all the stuff that, that you think you need in your life and you really don't, but you don't realize it. Yeah. And the other thing was like, she wrote a book and it's called Sabbatical from Yes. <laughs> Which oh, is what really? you're talking about, <laughs> like saying no, Sabbatical from Yes. So yeah, Christy Daniels. Chris, you know, Christy you gotta Daniels, have her yeah. Show. Yeah. So, yeah, that's Good awesome. Work. Well, the only thing that I wanted to bring up today and we're going really circling back to the beginning, which is the 11 universal year. It's the year of your spiritual mastery. It's the year of, you know, bringing heaven down to earth, embodying your spiritual gifts, um, balancing the masculine and the feminine the two ones the male and the female um creativity well that's really more of going to be next year but anyway what we're doing are mastering our manifesting skills this year start journaling your experiences okay what you're doing cause and effect mm -hmm. cause and effect if you just get the effect and you weren't journaling, then just stop and just write down who you're with, what you're doing, blah, 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 the energy of what you're in right before something happened because somehow you're attracting these experiences into your life. But also we're, pre we're really um, preparing ourselves for the new astrological year which actually starts in april and that's really the the natural new year right is in april when we when we transition into aries every year and i believe it's just a feeling i haven't heard anybody say this but i feel like what we're doing the first three months of 2018 so january february march 
are really finishing up any unfinished business from last year. I really think that which was complete shit. Last was. year sucked. Yeah. Yeah. Sucked. So hard for so many people. Yeah. For so many reasons. Yep. And I don't know anybody who is unhappy that it's now 2018. That's what I just said. I said on my last show, I'm like, yeah, we finally made it. And I don't know anybody who's pissed off about it. So, <laughs> but yeah, it was, it was bad. And again, it seemed like my stuff started at the time of the eclipse. And the reason why this is important right now is because on January 31st, okay, next week at the time of this recording, we're going to hit that spot again. On January 31st, we're going to have a total lunar eclipse at 11 degrees Leo, okay? Back on August 21st, we had a total solar eclipse at 29 degrees Leo, okay? And if you add the 2 plus the 9 at 29 degrees, you get an 11. So that number reduces to the master number 11. We're going to have... The lunar eclipse, 11 degrees Leo, and the sun at that time will be at 11 degrees Aquarius. And 11 is the universal number of 2018, right? So this is all about spiritual mastery. This is the year to master your spirituality through enlightened leadership. That's how I'm interpreting this, okay? That is how I am interpreting this. Add to that, there's all these 11s happening right now with big planetary events at all these degrees. It's weird. Two eclipses at 11 degrees, both total. One was the sun and one is the moon. So what the heck is going to happen? I'm like, oh I'm God! The energy is gonna switch and and be nice again because between that eclipse and and this one is just like I thought the previous year was crap, but then it just like that this time period between the eclipse and now has just been like, oh my gosh! Yeah, can I have a break, please? Mm -hmm. You know, like oh uh -huh. yeah, and it was you know, ugh, um, yeah. Anyway. The Le the Leo, you know, rules the heart, um, and can, and, and what else? My Venus is in Leo, come to think of it. I mean, my moon is in Leo, which, not my Venus, but my moon is in Leo. But there's something about my, something has to do, with, oh, it's the second house. I was thinking money. It has something to do with money because it's in the second house. And hmm. Second house are your um, possessions. But anyway, um, so that's happening in my second house. And for me, when the, when we had the solar, the total solar eclipse, my daughter left my practice, which affected um that house a lot and now we're going to have the moon in it so that's a little so where do you know where your moon is in your chart which house it's in i don't know but i'm i'm gonna have to say it has something to do with health because my on six the house. day before the eclipse my dad had this weird health thing happen which eventually led to him dying in september um and then with this wreck you know, and I got whiplash and my whole spine hurt. It kind of felt like, you know, everybody talks about the Kundalini, like you yep. feel it in your spine and stuff. Yep. And I'm like, screw that. I, I already did that in like 2012. I already had that back pain garbage. I don't want that again. Stop. Right. You know, right. but then like I, I get it again briefly. I feel like we're like in this, like we're coming around again. Like, so do I. You did that stuff. You know what it feels like? You know what you had to process then? here it comes again. So hopefully you cleared a lot of that and then what's left over should clear a lot faster. That's my feeling on that. You know what? I just thought of something. This is an epiphany because I have had the same feeling. I feel like I have felt like for the past couple of weeks that so far this year, 
it almost seems like an exact repetition of last year for me. Like it's like, and you know what? Last year was a 10 universal year, which reduces to a one year. Mm -hmm. Well, an 11 is two ones side by side. Mm -hmm. Maybe these, it's going to be a mirror year, like where we go through similar things, but where we make a different choice this time. Do you mm -hmm. see what I'm saying? Like we're, yeah, or we have, we have different knowledge now. Like we've got yeah. the knowledge now. We didn't know what the heck was going on. Yeah. You know, or maybe we did, but we didn't fully understand. And now we have a better grasp of it. So we should be able to handle it because even as bad as things get like 20 years ago when my mom died, that was something that took so long for me to process. Mm -hmm. And when dad died, like I'm in a totally different place. Yeah. And that was not like, it was crap. You know, it was hard. Like it is, it's grief, Yeah. but it wasn't like this long drawn out, like, Oh my gosh, every day sucks. And it, it yeah. taints everything in your whole life, but it's, it's, it's intense, but it's not as long. It's not as lengthy. And I feel like that for a lot of things, even this accident, like, you know, I had the physical things, but um, it, it seems to be healing a lot faster than I expected. Really? Okay. So, yeah. Okay. I don't know. Just my theory. And it could be different from every, for everybody. I mean, this could be like a lesson. This could be related to some lessons that I'm trying to process based on my life plan. Yeah. And other people could have a different experience. It could have to do with relationships for them, or it could have to do with your home or, you know, could be anything. So. Yeah. Or sometimes it really is when you have an accident like that, it really is just someone not paying attention to what they're doing, you know? And, you know, I really, you know, I was asking my, I, of course I Googled immediately like spiritual meaning for accident or rear end. I do that too. <laughs> like, oh, but the thing was like, not like there weren't any two that were the same. Like every person had a different idea about what that was. And, uh, and so like a couple of days later, I was like, I really wonder what that is. And what I got was that it was really just, it was just going to be an accident. Yeah. And like on a soul level, I just went, yeah, okay. That might serve a purpose for me. Yeah. And I think the purpose it served is I'm getting a lot of self-care right now. I get to see the chiropractor a lot. I get like the chiropractic massage. They put these like electrode things, uh, electrical pulses, like, oh, it feels warm and it yeah. relaxes those muscles. I got a massage, like, That's awesome. and I'm like, well, maybe, maybe the electrical things are like clearing energy pathways and, you know, everything's getting realigned. I've discovered my neck doesn't have a bend in it like it's supposed to. Like, how long has that been the thing? Yeah. So, you know, I'm getting, if I didn't have that accident, would I, I wouldn't go like I wouldn't have had x-rays. I wouldn't get regular chiropractic care. I wouldn't get massage. I wouldn't mm -hmm. have done any of that. So I feel like, yeah, it was an accident and maybe it was for her purposes. Like she needs to be more aware yeah. and I just happened to be there and it could have happened or it could have not happened. And I feel like at a soul level, I went, yeah, I, I can do that. That's not so bad. <laughs> like, okay, sure. Well I'll put up with uh, because I can see a, yeah I can see a benefit for me out of that and I think the benefit maybe outweighs the pain in the butt of having to get your car fixed and going through all that but yeah I don't know it just depends on your perspective and how you look at it I guess but yeah well it'll be interesting uh, for sure to see what comes from all this so guys we. Uh, this is coming up. I just want you to know. So whatever you were experiencing, um, you know, around the time of the, the, the solar eclipse last fall, I don't know if this is going to be sort of the end of that cycle with the lunar eclipse now at the same degree, or it's a softer effect because, you know, daddy's like, or the sun is kind of like the papa and represents, can represent uh, a more masculine energy. And of course the moon is much more feminine. So I don't know. We'll see uh, for sure, but just, you know, try to go with the flow as much as possible. I'm sure even if more surprises come out, they're not going to take you by surprise nearly as much because, well, you're more prepared now for it, aren't you? <laughs> After everything you've been through, 
this uh, last year and especially last fall. Well, that's it for me on my end. Did you have anything else that you wanted to throw out? No, I think we have given people so much to think about. I know. <laughs> so I, I, I know. I get like spiritual <laughs> topic ADD or something like, ooh, this, ooh. Me too. Yeah. Uh -huh. <laughs> All right. Well, just to remind everyone, Amanda's uh, website is, hold on, I'm drawing, um, and I already know what it is, timetravelhypnosis.com. Reach out to her, mention that you saw her on this channel or heard her on Practical Spirituality for Everyday Magic podcast, and she will give you the 25% off on that two-hour session. Um, go, just go ahead and order that. I mean, that could be so helpful in a practical way, not just, you know, oh, let me escape and find out how cool, you know, all of this is, but to, so you can get an idea of actually where you're heading and, you know, what, what you intended for yourself in this lifetime, just help you help maybe make your path, um, a little bit clearer for you. And, you know, know that some of you that are really going through a lot right now, this is not all for nothing, okay? It's not always gonna be this way. We're experiencing vibrational growing pains right now, okay? And we're just gonna have to get to know ourselves in a brand new way. And I think as soon as we get it, it's gonna be awesome. So, thanks so much for being here today with me, Amanda. I appreciate thanks. it so thanks much. Thanks for having me, it was fun. Yeah, it was. All right, well, thank you for watching everyone. Reach out to Amanda and be sure and subscribe if you're watching uh, this channel on YouTube and uh, subscribe on iTunes as well. And I can't wait, I will see you soon. I'll be back for another episode soon. I'm out of here. Just like an angel